Yes. All right, everyone, welcome to the first ever DAV lecture. I'm glad you're all here. I'm your host with the most. I'm David, and my other uh, other co-host with the most is right here, Brandon. And uh, today we're just going to be going over the basics of digital logic. Uh, so first, a little bit about both your leads. You know, there's me, Brandon Exotic, third year CE major, an Oklahoma country boy, just like my man Joe. I'm the weird, weird guy who does actually enjoy using Verilog and FPGAs. And if you ever want to see me do a card trick or listen to me play some music, you know, just hit me up. I will show you something amazing. And I'm David. I'm a third year EE. I'm originally from New York. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard me uh, use the dab joke uh, quite a few times already. And I sleep at a pretty strange hour. So if you message me, uh, there's a pretty high chance that uh, I'll message you back uh, immediately. And besides that, I enjoy listening to music and making playlists and uh, browsing, you know, memes, all that. All right. So first, what is DAV? DAV is the first three letters of David. So you, if you didn't know, this project was personally named after him. Uh, one night. All right, it's all right. Meanwhile, as we go through an excursion through Brandon's apartment, uh, I don't know if he's he's back or not. All right, all right, we're back. Sorry about that. Uh, so DAV actually stands for Digital Audio Visualizer. It is the only IEEE project dedicated to digital logic, Verilog, and FPGAs. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply digital signal processing to visualize Fourier transforms of signals onto a VGA monitor. So if you haven't seen this already, you should be able to look at how well Dav is working. Yeah, so, you know, at the GM, we kind of uh, played a video of like a shittier version of Dav, but at the info session, we, we played this version. And, uh, you know, I hope this version was more impressive. Because it definitely works a lot better. <laughs> definitely. All right. So then what are we going to teach you this year? So at, during fall quarter, we're going to teach you about digital logic and Verilog and arithmetic, which are some of the basic foundations of what we're going to need to know for the rest of the project. Then in winter quarter, we're going to uh, shift over into signal processing, including the fast Fourier transform, and then working with the FPGAs themselves, as well as inter- hardware interaction using the VGA monitor. And finally, in spring quarter, we're going to talk about digital and analog signals, how digital and analog signals are converted, and then we're finally going to make the impressive DAV. All right, any questions up to this point? All right, perfect. So now we're going to talk about FPGAs, uh, your new best friend, basically the heart of this project. Uh, it's the whole reason why the project works. Um, and so FPGAs, they stand for Field Programmable, programmable Gate Arrays. And uh, the way they work is they're basically just a, a block of hardware with a lot of logic gates and circuitry and stuff that you can reprogram on the fly. So usually, you know, you would have to, uh, like, if you, if you want to change your circuit, you would have to, like, pull out your breadboard and, like, you actually move the wires around and make sure everything's connected properly. But with an FPGA, you can just quickly uh, change your design on the fly uh, as you need. And so there's, uh, so every time you need to change it, you just uh, resynthesize your design, which is basically like recompiling in a regular computer uh, program. But for FPGAs, uh, you resynthesize it. And so there's five basic steps of FPGA programming, and we're going to go through them right now. First step is synthesis. Uh, synthesis, that's basically uh, uh, when you specify uh, your design, that's when you use Verilog and you, you actually code out your design. And uh, your synthesis tool, it turns your design into a netlist, which is, uh, is going to be used later on to actually realize the design in the FPGA. 
So the the net list, it's fit, literally a list of nets. It is quite, if you look at it, it's quite literally like a list of every single logic gate and everything it's connected to. Uh, so there's no hierarchy. It's just straight up like like a, a list of, of nets, you know. Uh, and the next stop is simulation. Uh, after you compile your design uh, and before you actually get it onto the FPGA, you can simulate uh, the, the, the design. And so that means uh, you can see what each signal is doing. Each signal is you know, either zero or one. Uh, you can see what, uh, what's, uh, sorry. You can see uh, where your data is being carried, uh, if, you're, if your inputs are getting the right outputs. And um, uh, you'll be working on this in the lab coming up. And you can, uh, in order to test your design, you're going to need to look at uh, simulate the waveforms uh, before you get onto the FPGA. And obviously, right now, no one has FPGAs. So this is the only thing you can do. Uh, next up is place and route, place and route, I guess. This uh, physically maps the netlist, the actual hardware. Uh, so this is when uh, the, the FPGA, the, the physical hardware get, comes into play, but only the FPGA can do this. So, you know, you don't actually have to worry about this because, you know, there's nothing you can do about, about this. And the next up is timing analysis. Uh, uh, you probably won't have to worry about this either, honestly, because usually it just works out fine. Uh, but in reality, you know, a lot uh, like uh, hardware isn't really the same as computer programs. Like things don't run instantly, and logic gates they uh, they need time to to process the data, and it, it takes time for all the bits to travel through the gates and uh, and and be processed. And uh, we'll talk about this later, timing analysis. Uh, but there's two main ones, uh, setup time and hold time. Uh, that's basically uh, before and after each uh, clock cycle, uh, the data needs to be held constant. And uh, you know we'll talk about that later, but that's not super important right now. And then finally, uh, it's post-programming debugging. Uh, when your timing is good and you've placed everything and routed everything, uh, you get it onto FPGA, you can still have problems. And if you get this error, you're kind of in trouble because the reason is usually kind of arcane and strange. And generally, you're going to need to like break out uh, one of the signals to the actual FPGA pins and uh, like figure out what's happening in reality because the, the problem won't show up in, in the simulations. Uh, yeah, anyway, any questions about any of these steps? All right. All right, so next we're gonna talk about digital logic or digital common sense, which I don't think I have normal common sense, so we'll see how we go. So digital logic is really how our basic computers think. So whenever you do a write a program and you have a variable like var or a ah or m player, you're actually storing a sequence of zeros and ones, which are bits that are either on or off or a zero or a one. And then the digital circuits that make up the hardware of your computer are what determine how we react to those, to those um, bits. So a lot of abstractions are possible. Sometimes you don't have to think at the very lowest layer but digital logic as a foundation is the pretty much the lowest level, keeping track of where every zero and one comes from and where does it go and what do you do with it. So here are some of the basics of digital logic, which are logic gates. So these basically create a different output based off of the input values they get. So these kind of are basically transistors, but they're a little bit higher level. So we just, you can see six of the basic ones right here and how they react to different inputs. A NOT will kind of invert the signal and we'll check if they're both ones. NAND will check if they're both ones and then flip them. Well, you can probably just look at it and figure it out. And there are some fun ex exercises um, down at the bottom that, can, that you can think through later. Okay, digital logic not basics. So now, when you take each individual gate and you actually combine them, you actually make 
different functions. So rather than program a function, you kind of hardware encode it. So these are some different types of common blocks, um, multiplexers, decoders, encoders, and flip-flops. So we'll talk more about those in, a, in the next lecture, but basically now adding the gates together, we make a different type of um, circuit. Um, and in Verilog and slash digital logic, there's a few kind of fundamental components. And so the first one is wires and they, they carry signals, they carry uh, information and each wire holds a value of zero or one. You know, we're working in a uh, binary here and wires are just used to connect uh, the output of one uh, like logic gate or module or register or whatever to the input of another. And uh, even though wires don't store uh, values per se, uh, in Verilog, you can still call, like, you can still, like, uh, call a wire, and it'll return you uh, the current value in the wire. So that's pretty useful. And next up is registers. Uh, they store values. They're what you might think of as variables in uh, regular, uh, regular programming languages. And usually, they have an input, an output, and a trigger signal. Uh, the, so when the trigger signal is, uh, is flipped, the register will uh, save the input signal and it'll just consistently output uh, whatever it saved until, it, you know, until you reset it and you save something else. Uh, finally, uh, we have bits, which you know, in binary, uh, it's zero or one. You know, there's only two options. I'm sure you know, everyone knows what binary is. Uh, you know, if you need if you need more information, you need more bits, and uh, you know when you combine all these together, that's you get that, that's digital logic in a nutshell. Yeah, I, I actually think I'm gonna take a quick detour because I might, or well, actually, wait, how do I? So, so maybe not everyone knows can picture what a wire versus a register is. So obviously. A wire, just a straight wire, holds a value, but a register will kind of look like something like this. And so what David was describing, you'll have here your input I and your output O, and then this is your trigger signal. So every time your trigger signal changes or hits a certain value, your output becomes your input. So yeah, just, just in case people don't really know what a register, they can't really picture what a register is, that's what it is. All right, so back to this. System Verilog, which is very different from C++ or any other programming language you'll probably encounter. So System Verilog really is a hardware description language. So, you type, so you're so you describing every little piece of hardware rather than a variable and an operation you're trying to do on it. So we've got a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. Um, similarities, um, Verilog does support case statements, arithmetic operations, bitwise operations, you do can you can declare variables. You do have semicolons, and you also have to declare your data type. Although the type is not like a short or a bool or an int, it's actually just a wire or a register, as we described before. Um, there's actually a lot of differences. There's mo instead of functions, you just create modules that actually become real hardware, and they and every line occurs in a in a program all at once instead of running sequentially. So there's no this line, then this line, then this line. Just, it all happens. There's also always blocks, which is kind of how we describe registers. They, a, a change happens every time this input signal occurs. There's also begin and end, which is like braces, which makes it a lot wordier and annoying. You also have to declare how large your data is, kind of like with an array. And you have to declare what's an input and what's an output for every variable. You also have test benches and synthesizing, which is kind of what we're about to talk about. So test benches. Test benches are an important part of digital logic and an important part of Verilog because they simulate your designs before you program them onto hardware. So they're, it's very important to use test benches because you'll, uh, you'll likely save your hardware from breaking and you'll also see what the common, um, the common mistake you're making is if you have like a logic mistake then you can see that before you program it because you can't see what's happening in, when it's on hardware. So obviously you're gonna be creating a lot of test inputs and monitor a bunch of different outputs as for your design as they occur. So it's basically like writing 
test cases for one of your C++ projects and seeing what happens. And then you can, rather than using print statements, you can only monitor your solution using waveforms. So you can't like say, am I, am I printing the right thing or am I getting the right value? I just have to look at a wave, which looks like this thing on the right. So these, these pictures are not meant to go together at any point, but basically if on your left, you'll have like some sort of basic design and in the middle, you'll have a test bench, which will kind of tell you like, oh, I want to reset and see what happens after I do different things. And then on the right, you'll get a waveform and you'll monitor each kind of variable that you've declared to see if it's getting the right value at the right time. Are there any questions about this? Nope. Okay. Oh, oh, wait, chat. All right, if there's no questions, I suppose we'll just move on. Except when we move on, you know, this is this is a lab. Um, so, you know, the spec's gonna be posted later. Uh, the lab's due next week. It's not that long, don't worry. Uh, just the point of the, this lab is just to get you familiar with uh, Quartus IDE, which is nothing like Visual Studio at all and also to get you familiar with uh, writing basic, some basic modules and uh, some test benches. Uh, you know, if, if the idea of like test benches was kind of confusing or foreign to you, like don't worry, we'll be giving you um, an example, uh, a test bench and a design uh, that you can jump off of. And then uh, to submit, you just like send us your des design files and uh, send screenshots with your waveforms. Obviously, no FPGA, so you know, just waveforms are the next best thing. All right, any questions about the lab? All right, do we have or know our teams? Uh, no, for for fall, everything is just by yourself, uh, just because it's it's, it's all it's all going to be coding projects, coding in Verilog. So uh, you know, you can just uh, you can you know you you can of course you can work with each other, you know, or you can work with us. But there's no, there's not going to be teams until uh, until winter when we actually send out uh, parts to to the teams. So we'll be forming teams, you know, later on in the quarter. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Then after the lab, some other random announcements. Join the IEEE Discord if you haven't already. This is where all the officers have their lab hours. This is where we're going to have our work sessions. You can talk to other members, ask questions. I'm sure there are other engineers there. That's the link. Uh, we'll be posting these slides later, so you can actually like click the link. Um, and then there is also a project mixer tomorrow, 8 p.m. on Discord. Uh, all people from all the projects are going to be showing up, and you can meet people and talk. And we'll have some uh, competitive games or non-competitive games, both of them probably. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a good time. And we will be there. And, and probably the other kids. And if you haven't already, submit your syllabus and your deposit by yesterday. You know, obviously it's 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 not yesterday, but you know, just just send it anyway because we need it. Uh, then, oh, also, if you haven't joined the Facebook group too, you should join the Facebook group because it's a lot easier for us to communicate with announcements on the Facebook group than sending everyone emails all the time. Uh, and then if you have questions, just, just, just ask us. All right. Anyone, anyone have questions? Uh, do you know when the specs will be posted for the first project? Yeah, we'll post that either by tonight or tomorrow morning. That's going to be due in, I think, next Friday. Yes, next Friday. Yeah. You know, if, if you have, if, if you can't make that, just like let us know and we'll work something out, you know.
All right. If there's no anyone, questions. Anyone have any questions? You just want us to email you the copy of our science syllabus? Yeah. Yes. That works. Just, yeah, you can email the uh, the email we've been sending you guys, uh, dav at ieeebruins.com. And that should work. Oh, and then for the deposit on Venmo, uh, is there anything like specific that you want us to put in the message to so you know it was us? Yes, that yes, please. Uh, I keep forgetting to say that, but please put your name and Dav, like just that you're in Dav, so that we know, so that our treasurer knows, like this is going to this person's deposit, basically. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. I mean, if there's no other questions, um, this is, I think this is the end of the lecture. Uh, you know, thanks, like thanks said, for coming out. Short and sweet.